start the day with the with a brief uh, short uh, movie. Some might call me an untypical engineer because my focus is not on building houses, machines or bridges. My dream is to become a management consultant. I have broadened my horizon by supplementing my te technical expertise with theories and models within economy, management and organization. The learning environment has been very interactive and we have had the opportunity to meet companies and experts within the field. We, all, we have gained an insight into how companies work and how they tackle complex problems through talk shows where the interviewer asks the source questions. The question, are you creative, can be a challenge to answer, but with the course Applied Creativity, I have learned that it is not as much about being good at sketching or perfect at writing. It is mostly about being able to control a creative process and navigate through the processes in your brain. We definitely can use this further on in our studies and in my personal work life. Uh, we had the chance to go through a real life case with a company, but uh, this case was really strict and it only took four weeks to go through the creative process, so we might have missed out on some in-depth work to improve our experiences with these methods. How to go from numbers to the real world? I found these questions very challenging and I am willing to know how to use the equations, the formula, the mathematics, the renewable technologies that we learn from the class, that we learn in the books, to implement actions that could benefit the society, that could help us to achieve a renewable world. During the course, teachers uh, were giving us lectures and we were solving different exercises uh, with the help of teacher assistants. Sometimes the concepts were very complex and they were new for all of the students, but the teacher assistants, who already had the course the previous years, knew exactly the problems that we were facing because they already had the same kind of problems and help us to solve them in an efficient and fast way. If I should change something, I will include more collaborations with companies or with ongoing research projects so we can get a bigger insight into a real life case. Hi there. I will not talk about numbers, engineering or mathematical modeling. I will just talk about pure business. This is very important because not only business people, but also engineers should be entrepreneurs. This is very important to bridge this gap and the course gave me the opportunity to do that. I was able to collaborate with students from Copenhagen Business School, which totally changed my mindset and this was very important. I also got the chance to take part in the business challenge that took place in Bangkok, Thailand and my team won for the best written part of the competition, so we were very happy. We also got the chance to collaborate with experienced entrepreneurs from all around the world. So you see that following this course gave me a lot of opportunity and this knowledge will not be forgotten. As you can see, that were some uh, statements from our students. We asked them to, to come with some statements about some of the courses they took and, and in fact also asked them whether they could come up with some constructive comments on how to improve our courses. They really had difficulties in coming with some, but as you saw, some of them came up with, with a few issues. Um, <clears throat> overall, they were, they were quite, quite satisfied, but still uh, we, we can certainly uh, further develop what we deliver in our teaching and education. And that is what the day-to-day -day is about. Uh, so welcome at our MEM mini conference uh, 2014 at DTU Management Engineering. This year's MEM mini conference is about teaching and education. We will go through a journey today and, and meet all different kinds of, uh, of tools and approaches and best practices, uh, which I hope we can share across our department and, and have a good uh, discussion about all those, uh, all those issues. Um, I'll come back to the, to the program a little later. Let me just try to introduce a little bit uh, 
uh, the, uh, the kind of the status of, of what we're doing in, in, in teaching. So I collected a, a set of numbers for, for our 2013 last year's activities in teaching and education. Overall, we had 174 courses in our portfolio throughout 2013. Uh, and uh, we, these courses, we have a significant footprint uh, in particular three uh, master programs, which is the Design and Innovation Program, the Engineering Management Program, and the Sustainable Energy Program. In all three programs, we do not only deliver the majority of the courses, but we also deliver the program management of those courses. Uh, an impressive number of 6,440 students uh, took part in all our courses during uh, uh, during 2013, which in fact puts us uh, as, as one of the two largest uh, departments at, at DTU in terms of teaching effort. Um, we uh, supervised, you supervised, uh, 160 master projects, uh, of which more than 80% were together with industry, uh, and also a very impressive uh, number. And uh, on top of it, last year we, uh, we, we started the accreditation process for our new bachelor program, Strategic Analysis and Systems Design. So this is for the kind of some, some state-of-the-art numbers for, for 2013 of uh, the huge effort we are putting into, into regular teaching at our department here at DTU. Um, but this, that was for the what we call regular students. We also do a lot of the lifelong learning aspect or, or domain uh, or executive education, you may want to call it. Uh, in total, we, we are operating 16 programs in 2013 uh, at the department, 16 different programs targeting different segments of the executive education market. Uh, we got our, our kind of flagship program, the, the Master of Management and Technology, the MBA got AMBAR accredit accredited last year. Uh, we, uh, uh, we have prototyped the, the NAMA uh, Academy in, in the context of uh, UNEBRISU. Uh, overall, we have uh, more than 360 participants in such executive or long-life learning courses uh, in 2013. Also, quite a footprint compared to what other uh, universities uh, uh, do and, and, and again puts us certainly in number one place uh, considered other departments at DTU with this, uh, respect to this effort here. So that was regular students, then long life learning and executive education. Uh, and on top of it, uh, we, uh, we run a number of what I would call extracurricular activities. And it's not because they're not related to our curriculum, uh, but they're kind of on top of it. Uh, like, for example, the Startup Heroes uh, program, where we started launched a, a video game, uh, which is targeted at all freshmen starting at DTU to get an introduction to entrepreneurship, where they can play becoming a little entrepreneur very early on in the first days they approach DTU, uh, to get an idea of that that may be a viable career path for them. Uh, we have an uh, entrepreneurship talent program where we are engaged in the master part of it and the idea is here to nurture some of the high potential talents in within entrepreneurship uh, and, and we are running and we kind of prototyped and developed this last year and, and running this this year first time, uh, a pre-burner weekend, what I would like to call it, uh, in where we introduce all the student teams uh, who want to present their projects in Grand Dust. Uh, there we want to coach and, and give input to the aspect of innovation and sustainability, uh, the two major aspects of Grand Dust. So again, those are, and just, just a selection of many more activities we are running beyond our traditional course setup, but certainly also important in understanding of what we're doing overall in teaching and education here at DTU. So this is, um, this is 2013 numbers. All this uh, cannot happen without what you may want to call a kind of a support system around. Uh, certainly, this cannot happen with all you teaching, uh, but there are a number of other roles and a number of very dedicated people here at the department who kind of build all the uh, surrounding environments so that we can perform this quite impressive task of teaching so many students in so many courses. And I need some help to put up the next video, please. Her står en underviser fra DTU Management Engineering. Han står alene, men han er ikke alene. På DTU Management Engineering er der et hold, som sammen sørger for at planlægge, udvikle og drive undervisningen på instituttet. 
Centralt i den daglige drift sidder studiesekretæren. Jeg hedder Gitte Hammertoft. Jeg er studiesekretær på Magen. Det er mig, der yder support for vores undervisere, vores sekretærer, også 101, studerende og ledelsen på instituttet. Ledelsen får undervisningsstatistik til årsrapporten og UMV'en, også gennem året. De studerende får hjælp af mig med tilmelding til kontor, kurser og med administrative problemer med afsluttende projekter. Det er hos mig, I kan få hjælp til rigtig meget. Det er desuden mig, der har ansvaret for, at kurserne får hjælpelæger og at hjælpelægerne får løn. Før vi overhovedet har undervisning, afrapportering til ledelsen og specialestuderende, er vi dog nødt til at have uddannelser. Uddannelserne planlægges og styres af studieledere. Jeg hedder Henrik. Jeg er studieleder for kandidatuddannelsen i Bæredygtig Energi. Det er en internationalt orienteret uddannelse, og vi har et studieoptag på ca. 80 studerende hvert år. Min vigtigste opgave det består i at udvikle og koordinere uddannelsen. Jeg udvikler på de seks studielinjer, som vi har, og vi søger at kvalitetssikre udbuddet løbende. Jeg står også for at koordinere studieoptaget, ser på dispensationer til nogle studerende, vi ser på, hvordan der skal dispenseres, når man skal have merit for sit øh, udlandsophold. Og endelig så er der også spørgsmålet omkring vores løbende koordinering med erhvervslivet i en følgegruppe. At undervise på højeste niveau kræver på den ene side, at man er mere end almindeligt dygtig til sit fag, og på den anden side, at man har styr på pædagogik og didaktik. Det sidste hjælper de pædagogiske koordinatorer med. Hej, jeg hedder Marie. Jeg er pædagogisk koordinator på Risø Campus. Og jeg hedder Stig. Jeg er pædagogisk koordinator på Lønbe Campus. En af vores hovedopgaver er at bidrage til udvikling af pædagogik og didaktik blandt instituttets undervisere. Og det gør vi gennem det, vi kalder et professionelt lærings- og undervisningsmiljø. Vi gør det, at vi arrangerer nogle pædagogiske seminarer, og så prøver vi også på andre måder at facilitere erfaringsudveksling mellem instituttets undervisere. Ja, og en af vores helt centrale opgaver, det er at koordinere øh, vores deltagelse på UDTU. Øh, og UDTU, det er jo DTU's øh, pædagog, kernen i, i DTU's øh, pædagogiske uddannelse. Og vi holder styr på, hvem det er, der deltager, øh, og tildeler og sørger for, at der er øh, pædagogiske supervisorer til dem, der deltager, og tildeler supervisorer til dem, øh, både nye faculty og andre, der deltager. En af de andre ting, vi også gør, det er, at vi, vi fungerer som ressourcepersoner. For eksempel, hvis der er nogen, der har fået en dårlig evaluering af deres kursus, eller hvis de bare har en idé til et nyt pædagogisk tiltag, de gerne vil føre ud i verden. Det lyder jo alt sammen som en velsmurt maskine, men hvem holder egentlig øje med, at alt fungerer, som det skal, og hvem tager affære, hvis der engang vil med noget, der ikke gør? Mit navn er Susanne Baslev Nielsen, og jeg er studienævns formand på instituttet. I studienævnet arbejder vi med kvalitetssikring og overordnet planlægning af alle instituttets uddannelsesaktiviteter. Det vil sige, at vi arbejder med planlægning og koordinering af de tiltag, vi har. Vi arbejder med evaluering, får vi klagesager, hvordan bliver det evalueret i campusnet. Og vi arbejder med løbende forbedring og udvikling af vores undervisning. I studienævnet er et valgt organ, og det betyder, at vi er blandt de seks medlemmer, der er, så er der halvdelen af studerende, og den anden halvdel er valgt blandt de videnskabelige personale. Hej, jeg hedder Ida, og jeg er repræsenteret de studerende for Institutstudienævnet, og har mulighed for at tilføje emner til vores dagsorden, som er specielt relevante for de studerende. Jeg har mulighed for at præge, hvad vi skal fokusere på, når vi evaluerer vores kurser, og jeg kan frit udtale mig omkring mine holdninger til de forskellige emner, vi drøfter på instituttet. Så jeg føler at i høj grad, at vi studerende vi bliver respekteret og hørt. Så so that var the setup behind our teaching in all the courses we have. And uh, I think it's justified to give those people a, a hand because they are really doing a good job. <clears throat> If you look at our, our strategy uh, with respect to 
how we want to develop our teaching and education here at the department, then you have to look at the UMV, the, the, uh, the strategy plan we develop. And uh, uh, without going into details, uh, certainly we have a mission which is kind of the underlying uh, rationale or providing the underlying rationale for our department uh, and in terms of uh, engineering management. But what we want to deliver is courses known for adding value. And, uh, and that has meant quite serious because it's defining our offerings in terms of our teaching and education from the perspective of the students to whom we want to add value through our teaching and education activities. Uh, to do that, we need a coherent and coordinated course portfolio so that the individual courses can, can fit together to, to build a whole program which is viable and can add value together. And we do that with state-of-the-art teaching methods and uh, adequate pedagogical approaches. And to achieve this state-of-the-art uh, in terms of how we do it uh, in a coordinated and coherent way adding value through our courses and programs, we continuously have to develop what we're doing. And the day-to-day -day is one of those stepping stones to further develop on, on our teaching and education. But uh, what does it mean that we are, are handling all these different courses? Or what different courses do we have? Um, and that is just a, a, a try to a very, very rough sketch of the different types uh, of courses we have. Well, one thing is we have what I would call basic tool courses. Uh, then uh, we may want to call uh, a specific type of courses, let's just call them X courses for the time being, because I don't have a better name really. Uh, and then we have core courses. Now, if we can structure our course portfolio in those three different types of courses. Um, the basic tool course. What is the basic tool course? Well, the characteristic is typically it is necessary and it's a basics for all who want to study at DTU. Uh, it's, it's relevant then for most or in fact almost every student at DTU and it's typically needed quite early on in the studies, either early on in the bachelor or early on in the master's program, all depending on what you're studying. Uh, what are examples? The typical examples are statistics and mathematics. Well, statistics and mathematics we do not supply here. That's DTU Compute. In fact, if you look at our offerings in terms of the basic tool courses, we currently really have any. You, you may argue that uh, the theory of science for engineers is a part of, or some aspects of it may be a basic tool course, but really Overall, we do not supply such a basic tool course yet. We have been talking about whether uh, a, a modeling approach may be a, a, a new type of basic tool course adequate for, for many, at least many students at DTU, and it may be our department or management science uh, division in particular uh, who, uh, who could uh, provide this. And that, but that, could, you, you could say, is a development path. So those were the basic... Uh, tool courses. Now let's come to the to the X courses. What are the X courses? Uh, formerly known as generic courses, and the last time I tried to use the word generic because uh, it is in fact a kind of a misleading term terminology and it puts us into a specific corner of, of being quite superfluous and, and not, not, not as relevant. So let's just call them X courses from now on. So what do X courses do? Well, we have students at DTU and most of our students here at DTU develop a deep and thorough knowledge of a specific technology domain. Now, to take our mission at DTU and at DTU Management Engineering uh, for real, that means that this deep, thorough technolo technological domain knowledge needs to be applied in industrial context, at least when you start working in industry afterwards. And to do so, there are a set of competences needed which make this transferring of good knowledge learned at DTU in a technology domain viable and relevant in an industrial context. And these competences, those can be provided by our X courses. You could say these X courses serve as kind of a catalyst, a catalyst which makes technology knowledge relevant uh, by introducing some what you could call basic industry skills, basic skills to perform in an industrial organizational context. So, uh, which courses are these? Which courses do we have in the, as, as X courses currently? Or which can we define as being X courses? Well, certainly, again, the theory of science for engineers 
fit into this, but very much so project management, uh, our TMO course, which is looking at some kind of a basic business understanding, uh, quantitative sustainability assessment, a course we do not have yet as a context of an X course, but which would fit nicely uh, in, in our understanding of what an engineer needs to do and needs to understand when they perform in industrial context. Innovation management is about how to overcome barriers uh, when, you, when you want to transfer a new knowledge gained at the university into an industrial context, and maybe entrepreneurship as another way out in terms of, uh, of maybe starting a new business based on your profound knowledge gained at DTU. So those may be X courses. I'm not saying that is an ended list here, but uh, we should also try to see that, that we are not just defining all our course portfolio as X courses. And why is that? Well, because there are some challenges attached to those X courses. One thing, they're big. Well, big has, in fact, two facets here. They have to become big. And that's not necessarily easy. Uh, well, you know, if you look at a team or a project management, they have grown big over time. Um, but uh, if we would like to start a new X course, well, you have to find slots in the study plan where they can fit in. And we are competing with a lot of other stuff. And if you ask other people around here at DTU, they're not necessarily convinced that if you have to prioritize, that you have to prioritize the X courses. There may be other issues which are as relevant, uh, at least as relevant. So there is a marketing effort related to that, which we have to take serious. But once, and I'm pretty sure they grow big, because they are relevant, if we define them correctly, well, then they grow big, and that big means humongous, monster courses of these three, 400 students a semester. And that's not just easily handled with the, the ways we typically handle courses today. So another challenge is, why is it necessarily just us who has to develop it? It could be someone else. Uh, uh, and, and we have to make a case for why it's our department who wants to deliver this specific type of courses here at DTU. And then we also have to make sure that we are not just identified as a service provider to the rest of DTU in terms of just delivering courses so our students are better prepared for an industry job. We also have a core of our own and a speciality and what you could call maybe even a technology domain, a management technology domain, which we want to nurture and develop. So we're not just only a service provider for everyone, we also dig deep in our own issues. And that, that balance needs to be struck, even if we uh, further promote the X courses here. So those are the, the challenges attached to that. And, and those are immediate challenges. This is something we need to develop even in the short term. Now then come our, our core courses. So what are our core courses? Core courses are those courses which relate to what we do in research, where we are experts. And, and here, we can have basic courses, which provide an understanding of a given management area. So it's kind of uh, providing a framework, maybe, or, or a rough understanding of what we are talking about. That is then uh, further developed into advanced courses. Uh, that is competences in performing a specific management area. And then further into expert, uh, expert ability to develop management tools and approaches in our specific domains be it quantitative sustainability assessment, be it innovation management, be it performance management, risk management, and so on, and so on, and so on. So our core courses together define what our department as a speciality delivers to a specific subset of engineering students here at DTU. And together, the core courses, the basic, advanced, and experts with, within a progression uh, define of uh, what, our, uh, what our footprint here at DTU is together with the X courses. So what are the challenges when we are looking at, at our basic, at our core courses? Um, well, one of the challenges is certainly that we have to develop a coherent cor course portfolio with clear focus areas. In fact, when interviewing students, 
you see, and what we hear here today is, they are very satisfied with the individual courses we provide. They are, in fact, very satisfied if you also look at the student ratings. So, overall, we do a good teaching job, and we obviously not only deliver relevant knowledge, but we deliver it in a good way. However, when you ask them, so all seen together, can you give a good explanation of what you're studying? Many of our students have a hard time telling, in few words, what is it they learned here. And that separates these students, in fact, from many other students. If you pick a student in chemical engineering, they are pretty clear on what they do. They know their individual courses, they are satisfied, but they can also explain in what they are. Our students, not all over, have yet achieved that. And that is our task to make clear that we have a coherent course portfolio and clear focus areas. At least the basic courses typically also means bigger courses. They are open not only to our students and our programs, but they are open to all the other students here at DTU too. They, by that, kind of gain a correct character of an X course. They are not an X course because they are just basic for ours. They are not necessarily defined as being of utmost relevance when you go out in whatever technology domain you're in. But uh, here, they, they still grow bigger and that's a challenge. And then we have another challenge which is attracting the top students. Uh, uh, at least for our master programs, uh, that is because we have to kind of, you could say, shop around in all the different bachelor programs. Uh, and, and one of the measures we have is also establishing uh, a bachelor program with, our, with a bigger footprint of our own so that we can nurture and grow top students because once you've become an expert, there is a good chance that you either become an expert out in industry, but it's certainly also a great recruitment base for our research uh, um, programs, our PhD programs. So this is what you could call our development task on the short and midterm. That is something which we have to, to do now. And that is something the day to day will be dealt with. We are looking at a lot of tools and different issues which can help us looking at our X courses and at our, uh, our core courses and at our course portfolio. But uh, I think, uh, and, and I would like to use the last two minutes to just trigger some thoughts about, well, m honestly, I'm not even sure if it's a long term. I'm, I'm a little afraid it's already at the short term that we will be faced with some kind of dis disruption here. And uh, I think we do good in, in starting preparing for that kind of disruption. What do I mean by that? Well, one thing is, if you look around a society, uh, I think the, the turbulence is increased with respect to our business models. Uh, I just took the last example here of the suggestion of improving quality by extending the bachelor programs and significantly reducing the master programs. Uh, I mean, it typic it, I would call this a typical Danish approach because it's really just focusing on this country and forgetting that everyone else has moved to a three plus two model, uh, three bachelor years, two master years, but uh, a part that we would limit all our of, uh, of moving abroad from our students, uh, it is an interesting approach because at the end of the day, this means significantly less resources to universities in terms of our teaching efforts. And that will trigger through all our different activities. So there is happening something in society, and I think it's happening with increasing uh, pace. Uh, then we have the other side, is, is the technology side of it. Uh, and I don't have to tell you that, but probably you, you know that, that we see some quite significant developments on the technology side, where the whole idea of how teaching is delivered and education is delivered is significantly changing. Um, and, and I just pick up the Coursera example, but, the, you know, Coursera is just one. There are so many other examples of where other universities and other providers, and not even universities, but other providers go out and carve into our business. And, and now they learn. And once they learn, then they overtake. So, so we have to be aware of that these developments are working around us. And, and then the other thing is, is both the society and technology, and what is about uh, the demand side? The, our students, are they changing too? And, and I don't know really, and I, I hope I'll be a little bit smarter on that a little later in about an hour or so, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure we are facing a new type of students here, which will be quite different compared to what we have been dealing with the past two, three, four hundred years. 
uh, I think we're we're we are looking at at quite a disruptive change here, and uh, uh, which which will, together with society putting pressure on us, together with that technology is evolving, will have the potential for significant disruption on the business models under which we are operating. And I know some people say, well, DTU, in fact, would work really nice if we wouldn't have that many students. The lesser students, the better we are financially off. In fact, our, our teaching costs us a lot of money. On the other hand, I'm also pretty sure, and I know, that teaching is, in fact, our strongest strongest rationale, our strongest arm to put in new knowledge into practice. So if we stop teaching I'm, or, or reduce significantly teaching, I'm also pretty sure that society will not be willing to invest as much money into research as they do now. So thinking that, oh, well, if we can just get rid of teaching and others could do that, and then we could live a safe and heavenly life here, that's not going to work. Uh, and I, so in terms of acquiring funds in the future, but also in terms of building our rationale, Teaching is one of our strongest pillars to stand on. And then we have to be prepared for this kind of disruption. So what is the program today? Well, you will be challenged a little bit, and that will be by Camila in a second. Uh, so it's about what will the future bring. Uh, it's kind of carrying on a little bit the story of potential disruption. Then I would like something, uh, we have planned an element which is connect and learn, the teaching tool bazaar. I will briefly introduce that uh, after the next lecture here. Uh, then you would have the opportunity to do more in-depth learning in the mini workshops. Uh, and uh, then you're not challenged, but you can challenge. You can challenge the president on, on our DTU strategy, where teaching is an important part, and, but here we then open up again a little bit and go beyond teaching into research and all the other areas. And not the least, uh, we have a number of breaks here which are of a good length, so uh, meet and greet and talk to your colleagues, connect. Uh, this is kind of the program for today, and I will take you through the, through the next steps now. I would like to uh, invite uh, Camila Hutas uh, up here on the podium. Uh, Professor Camila Hutas is the head of research for the Danish Center for Youth Research. Uh, and uh, uh, her research uh, is in the field of youth and higher education. In fact, mostly she focuses on what drives huge choices or choice processes with respect to education, not the least. And her specific interest is in meeting between the youth education and the higher education system. And uh, we're looking really forward to your talk here today. Camilla will bring her talk in Danish, uh, uh, but I'm sure that you can come up with uh, questions afterwards in English and, and we'll try to do our best in, in answering that. So, what will the future bring, Camilla?